and two, that something be done about Israel. Because I'm related, my sister-in-law's I.F. Stone's daughter. And Stone was one of the people who talked a lot about how really it had to be a binational state. No one's bullshit about a land without people, for a people without land, was just a lie. Um, there were two rabbis I heard of recently, I don't know their names, but they sent back a message to the Zionists saying, the bride is beautiful, but she is already married. And that is a much more apt description of what Palestine was. Uh, I'm very uh, delighted to be here with you today. This is a very important day. I don't know if you are briefed about what happened in Palestine today, but I think that for the first time in the short history, the Israelis start to understand that Palestine is not going to disappear. Um, I'm going to play just a very short tune. It's a tune that was um, sung by one of my favorite Palestinian trumpet players, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> I do it every night because very much like Louis Armstrong, I do believe that in spite of Benjamin Netanyahu, Shimon Peres, Ehud Barak, Apak, Shmeipak, ADL, Abel A. Foxman, in spite of all those people, this is going to be a wonderful world. <laughs> Invoking. The first one, 
is that after 63 years of the Nakba, the Palestinian people was never more united than today, was never more determined to gain its political national rights in independence, in the end of occupation, in the right of return more than today. And the other one is that Israel has to realize because of the revolutions in the Arab world that Israel is facing now Arab nations, not Arab governments, not Arab regimes who conspired against the Palestinians and against their national rights. From today on, history is written in a different way by Palestinians, by people just like you who stand with solidarity with Palestinians, who believe in the cause of justice, of freedom, against oppression, no matter what the name of this oppression was. Those people who believe that justice should be premised, that peace should be premised on justice, and human rights, and political rights for Palestinians. Benjamin Netanyahu today gave a statement to the, uh, to the press that the aim, the goal of those people who went out to the streets in the Arab world and on the Palestinian borders is the state of Israel as such. It's not about the borders of 1967. And guess what? He's right. Because yeah. the state of Israel, as a criminal state, as a state based on racism, expulsion, and land confiscation and assassination is a state that anybody who believes in peace should stand, stand against. Today, all over the world, people, more and more people, believe that occupation of the Palestinian territories, the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem is part of the same mentality that established the state of Israel in 1947 as a pure ethnic state, not a democratic state. Whoever believes that Israel is a democratic state should start to think again of it. Because democracy do not come into terms with ethnic cleansing, do not come into terms with the crimes against the humanity that Israel perpetrated against the Palestinian people in 1947, 48, the massacres, the expulsion, the war against Gaza, Der Yassin, Kufur Qasim, and the list goes on and on and on. A state that was established to be purely Jewish, not in the name of all Jews all over the world. And my friend Alan here is one example. It's not about Jewish. It's about domination. It's about segregation. And it's about controlling Palestinian lives. Yeah. and marginalizing them. Today we are here to say, not anymore. 63 years of expulsion is more than enough. 63 years for Palestinians being away from their homes and their lands is more than enough. And time is very, very close. I believe it. I deeply believe in it. We will practice our right of return. And we will be free from this racist criminal regime that is called Israel. Thank you so much for being here.